It's truly phenomenal that someone could create something so great yet so terrible and live a line and a life where that decision would haunt them and form them for the rest of their lives. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Oppenheimer. This is a film that a lot of us have been quite excited about. Big return for Christopher Nolan to the cinema. This almost entire movie is in 70 millimeter IMAX. And this is the movie that follows Oppenheimer's life. A very key section of it up until after the bomb goes off and the subsequent trials, espionage, personal fallacies and life attributes that he went through afterwards. Something that Nolan showed with Dunkirk is he doesn't do history, he does personal stories. Oppenheimer is very much a personal story. I've actually been reading the American Prometheus book that this film is based on for the most part. I was actually quite impressed by how much of that book is squeezed into this film. I've only gotten about uh, I'm almost 50% of the way through, and a good chunk of that was handled in the first hour and a half. And there's a reason why this movie is three hours long, because they cover a ton. And in very well-known Christopher Nolan fashion, he doesn't do the movie as a straight linear. It's linear, non-linear, linear. So it's like, you have an A and a B, and it goes like... And I'm very happy for it. The pacing of this film is phenomenal for three hours long. I don't know about a rewatch. Maybe you would get more from it because as Nolan has done, these are thinking movies and doing it from the perspective of wanting to really enrich you into Oppenheimer's personal struggles, both with his love life, his, his affiliations with political ideals and parties, and then being the father of the bomb and what came from it, even though his original intentions were that of peace, of the idea that once the world saw what these things could do, we're not going to, you know, keep making them, right? And the absolute opposite of what would happen to him afterwards. The film really does focus on three different key things, one being this non-trial, but sort of hearing for Oppenheimer, uh, this interview sort of conversation with Louis Strauss, who's very excellently played by Robert Downey Jr., by the way. And then all of this being interwoven with Oppenheimer going from starting in Cambridge, going from chemistry to physics, and then following this life of him going through all of his journeys. Killian Murphy has been working up to this role for years. Just reading the book, I could see Killian as Oppenheimer and does it phenomenally. The guy has able to nail down that nuanced performance from a man who knows what he's doing or learning to know what he's doing, convicted in what he's doing, and then second guessing himself. After the bomb element happens, the personal journey that we go on with Oppenheimer is incredible, not just from his performances, but how they convey it. The, the personal anxiety, stress uh, attack that he has after the bomb goes off and just this high aperture, which absolutely visualizes what happens to one when you have a panic attack. Everything just goes completely out of focus because you are just trying to stay centered from the sound, which thank God the sound's good. I know that Nolan's had a bit of a weird track record of late with really strange sound mixing, so thank God that works. Really, really great music done by Ludwig. Uh, I did enjoy the cinematography by Hoyt and the storytelling, just phenomenally well done. And it's amazing how much they focus on certain small elements, like the, some of the affairs he had. One in particular being talked about, which I was kind of interested to see if they would, because that did have a very big effect on him. And Nolan includes that, because like I said, this is a very personal movie. His own personal convictions and his doubts about making something that literally changed the face of the world, that changed the course of history forever. Oppenheimer's theories weren't just about the bomb, like everything that he theorized would go to being about how, how we view black holes to the fucking barcode scanner at grocery stores. This, this dude did a lot with what he theorized and what he made. It's just showing what happened to him and his own personal convictions and what people thought of him from both sides of the aisle both people who hated communism 
both people who were his friends and people who didn't like him but still respected him. As Nolan's done, he makes movies for the thinking person. Like, you're not gonna go into this and be spoon-fed. This isn't a history movie. And I get why he was saying that when he was making this movie. Because, like, how are you not making a history movie when you're making a movie about Oppenheimer? History sure surrounds what happened to him, but it is him first and foremost and the effect he had on the world. The editing was really well done. There's this lady, Janine, who's been editing for Nolan the last while. I didn't even know that Lee Smith wasn't editing him for him anymore. I think he took the Oscar from Dunkirk and walked. The fact that this movie does not have the core of Nolan that we've come to know for like all of the 2010s, doesn't have Lee Smith as the editor, doesn't have Hans Zimmer as the composer, doesn't have Wally Pfister as his DOP, and doesn't even have Michael Caine. There's a ton of fucking people in this movie. You are going to be blown away by how many people in this movie but despite all of that not one is michael cunning i was actually kind of surprised by that i didn't realize that until i was leaving the theater if there's anything that might be a bit of a negative to it it is the fact that it is maybe not going to be as rewatchable when you watch it a second time that is a something that i do factor in when i watch movies and i review them as i think about what would it be like to watch them again what would it be like to get that experience but even then, I still say this is probably one of Nolan's better movies. It's the first time he's gone full R, like there's nudity in this movie, which I'm just, just bizarre. This is the most personal movie he's ever done. This is definitely one of the more straightforward ones. Like it's not trying to be woobity woobity or anything. It's not trying to be overly complicated. It's the exact opposite of Tenant. If anything, it's taking the elements that he did with Dunkirk, that non-linear editing that he did in Dunkirk, which kind of didn't vibe with me like I knew there was going to be some way they were going to try and do this in a Nolan way and that was it but they took that and then they put it a character in the middle of it Dunkirk didn't really have any central characters like it had many characters here and there Oppenheimer has Oppenheimer and he is in this editing style this storytelling style and it works so much better and honestly, I've been sitting here and I've been trying to think of a negative. There's one little bit that I can't even really say. It's not even, it's just, it's a personal aesthetic thing that was a makeup thing that I thought was strange. Rurally speaking, there is nothing wrong with this movie unless you're just not a fan of Nolan films. Maybe it does give you a lot. This movie is three hours long and it still could have been longer because there was still so much more to show, so much more to tell about him. But Nolan kept it in the realm of what it needed to be, and he ends it on a great note, too. I love how the movie ended. With all that said, my final rating for Oppenheimer, and I, I, I just can't, man. I, I've been trying to think about it, and it is. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give Oppenheimer a 7 out of 7. It's a solid movie. I can't fault it. There's nothing that I can really say that would bring it down. Maybe, Like I said, maybe the rewatch, and I am going to rewatch it again. And I'll see if that has that opinion, that feeling. But I did. I wanted to watch it again after seeing it. So that's already a major bonus for me. Very interested in what you guys have to say. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Did you guys like it? Did you not? Are you interested in it? Are you going to read the book yourself? Let me know. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.